Hey class, what is going on? I am so very grateful for the time that we've had to enjoy our family, to be able to uh, just get our minds focused, stretch more, drink more smoothies with antioxidants and berries, uh, taking this time to really reflect on, you know, how we want to move forward. You know, Miss Breeze thinks, well, Miss Breeze knows that the new year begins in March. However, just getting ourselves uh, aligned with what we want to be able to do, get in our garden or our minds cultivated and ready to be able to thrive, getting the weeds out, right? Toxic thoughts, negativity. It was a beautiful time, two weeks that we've had away. However, it is time to get back into the game and to dive in to the root of the matter. Today, we are talking about weeds. Today, the topic is know your weeds. You have to be able to know exactly what it is as a function, right? Because creation has function. So you have to know what this weed is and what they look like. Because by definition, weeds are simply just plants that are growing in areas that you don't want them to grow in. A weed is a plant that's not valued where it's growing. So primarily, you need to be able to know that weeds are not bad. That's one thing that I want to begin this session emphasizing. Weeds are not bad plants. They're in the wrong place at the wrong time doing the wrong thing. The opposite thing that what you want to do uh, in your space for, let's say, like your strawberry plant. You got your strawberry plant and you want your strawberry plant to grow and, and so you're watering it. The soil is very nice with humus and loam and, you know, you've got a lot of minerals up in there and, and, and you the sun is shining on it. And then here comes these random plants. We'll call them weeds. And what they're doing is growing in that same environment, taking the minerals away, the water away, the sun exposure away from what you primarily are focusing on which is the strawberry plant so I just want you all to know that weeds creation is not bad weeds are not bad they're just growing in the wrong place in the wrong space at the wrong time doing the wrong thing for what you want them for what you want okay had to just lay that down as the law now uh weeds grow very fast uh their seed dispersal rate is out of this world and on top of that a lot of them are able to grow in the strangest uh environments they can grow pretty much um anywhere and everywhere uh so what is a weed a weed is a plant that is not valued where it's growing this plant grows in abundance it grows very very fruitfully and it most times overgrows and chokes out the plants that you actually want to be able to develop. So the cons of weeds, right? They take away the water, the moisture, blocking the sun and the nutrients from the plants that you're actually trying to grow, right? The ones that are surrounding it. And they can also grow absolutely anywhere. Like I reiterated, uh, or like I said in the beginning of this session, they can grow anywhere and everywhere. And they produce and spread seeds at a rapid rate. So seeds are just constantly, they're constantly going through pollination. They're constantly being fertilized. Those, that fertilization is creating fruit to seeds. They're being dispersed. It's a constant cycle. It's, it, it's beautiful. It's just wrong place. We don't want you right here. So let's think about the balance though, right? Because like I said in the beginning, creation is, is, is good. It has a function. So what the benefits of weeds are is that they provide soil stabilization. So what that means is that there's always something being produced in this soil. Life is regenerating, right? So it's, it's, there's life being brought forth, regardless of if it's in the wrong place or the wrong time, there is life, right? The soil is stable and there's nectar for the bees. So the bees are able to come to these plants and get nutrients from them right so they can also be used as food for animals and people right and also there are medicinal purposes for these weeds depending on the weed 
right? D depending on the weed, there is a beautiful uh, weed called dandelion. And what it does is it's really, really good uh, for um, helping you lose weight, which is one thing. And it's really good as a diuretic, helping you use the bathroom. And it's really good for uh, for just expelling toxins out of your body. All right? It's really, really good. All right? It's really, really good. If you're constipated, get you some dandelion root. All right, here we go. So here are some points that I pulled out just to focus on for right now. Uh, it's important to pull the weeds up by the root. If there is a weed, you have to pull it by the root because if you don't guess what that weed is going to continue to grow you have to get to the root of the matter in all things you should also weed once a week you should be weeding your garden once a week i know i know i know that seems like a lot however weeds pop up so fast and frequent right those seeds are spreading they're being watered they're soaking up the minerals and nutrients and the sun exposure and the oxygen and they are growing so you have to weed once a week, at least. So take some time, marinate on that, because here we go. We're about to jump into the different types of weeds. This weed right here is called goose grass. I chose these particular types of weeds because one, their names are very memorable and also they are common. So you can walk down the street and be able to see them and you'll be able to say, hey, that's goose grass or hey, that's a, a Shasta daisy or that's a, well, I'm not going to say all of them. You, you, we're going to go over them in a minute. So this, my dear, dear, dear students is goose grass and goose grass is a part of the summer annual weeds that germinate when the soil texture is warm, right? 60 to 65 degrees Fahrenheit. It needs moisture and light to grow. It grows well in compacted or tight soils and can successfully compete with warm season and cool season grasses during the summer. So this is a summer weed, right? And I know you see these in like different types of lawns. I see them often. This is goose grass. And people say that it looks like a wagon wheel. So, this is the Shasta daisy. We spoke about the Shasta daisy. These daisies are everywhere, right? Everywhere. Everywhere. Right? This daisy spreads aggressively and what starts off as a nice clump of a few plants can also soon turn into hundreds of these flowers going everywhere. Shasta daisies spread mainly by seed. So if you cut the flower stalk, the flower will fade. You know, Miss Breeze believes that you grab it by the root. That's the most beneficial thing to do. However, being that these grow by seed, chopping it off at the stalk is also beneficial. So, yep, you can have some. Shasta daisies. There's a, a variety of different ones. However, that's the most common Shasta daisy. The second, the third, excuse me, the third we, the, that we're gonna focus on is Lespadesa, or also known as the Japanese clover. The Japanese clover is an absolutely beautiful, beautiful annual, growing annually. It's oftentimes resembling a mat on the ground. So what it does is it grows sometimes pink and purple flowers. And what it does, is it grows close to the earth, right? It, it grows very close to the earth. 
And so if you would like to extract this weed or get rid of it, you would have to dig it, pull it up and pretty much just like yank it out or you could dig a hole and scoop it out as well. You have to get to the root of it. You can't just mow it with the lawnmower or chop it with the shears. You have to get down and dirty in the ground and grab it by the roots. This is the Japanese clover, right? Japanese clover. Next we have the Virginia buttonweed. The Virginia buttonweed is similar to the Japanese clover in that it grows close to the ground and you need to really dig a hole to uproot it um, or really like just keep grabbing and grabbing and grabbing until you don't see anything and then still tossing the soil after you water it. The Japanese, uh, the, excuse me, the Virginia buttonweed is widely considered as the most invasive weed in the South, right? Georgia, Louisiana. And this plant is extremely, extremely prolific in that it multiplies very fast. It has heavy seed production, right? Heavy seed production because this is one of those self-pollinating type of things. It pollinates itself. It doesn't need a bird or a butterfly. It can pollinate itself. And these type of roots can grow and thrive during the winter as well. So don't just think because it's cold outside, they're not going to be there. This Virginia buttonweed is going to still be there during the winter. It has endurance, right? So even when a mower sets its mowing machine at the, at the, at the shortest close to the earth level, it's still going to require you to, to, to yank it by the root because it resembles grass, right? All right, let us review, right? Let's review. So we have the knowledge that weeds are plants that are growing in areas that they are not valued. Weeds are not bad. Weeds are just growing in the wrong place in the wrong space at the wrong time, taking nutrients away from a plant that really, 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 really needs it. The benefits are that they provide soil stabilization and nectar for the bees, right? And also certain weeds have medicinal properties. You have to just know your weed. So you don't always have to pull them and throw them in a compost bin. You can pull them and use them. You just have to know them. You have to be able to recognize them. That's what we're doing right now. They also, the cons that they take away the water to block the sun and absorb the moisture and nutrients from the surrounding plants you are trying to grow. So those are some cons, those are some pros, and that is the function and definition. We are gonna dig a little bit deeper into this next week. I'm so glad to be back with you all, to be learning with you all as well, because I learn every single time that I teach and I look forward to you all uh, sending in your homework. I will have your homework to you, your sheet. I will have your sheet. Um, Mr. Jones will post it and then you'll just send a copy to me after you complete it. It's gonna be super simple. Super straightforward. I want to know about your break. I want you to tell me how it was. You can put it in the comment section. You can put it on your homework. I want to know, you know, how you use this time. Do you meditate? Do you drink a lot of water? Do you stretch? I want to know all these things. So thank you so much for your time that you spent tapping in with the knowing of the weeds. And I look forward to seeing you all soon. Peace, 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 love and light.